What's up guys, in this video we're going to be taking a closer look at my 5 favorite everyday carry knives in my collection. So it's no secret that I have a lot of knives in my collection, way more knives than any one person uh, needs to own, but uh, in that collection there have been 5 knives that have been pretty constant for me that I never really get sick of carrying, and if I can't really make a decision on which knife to carry, I always resort to one of these 5 when it comes to my knife of the day. I never get sick of of any of these knives. I never get sick of carrying them. All five are versatile, but each of them have something special about them that makes them unique and makes them a mainstay in my collection and in my everyday carry rotation. First up is the Benchmade Bugout, specifically the 535BK-4 model. This is essentially a more premium version of the iconic Benchmade Bugout. Instead of Grivery handles and S30V steel, you have M390 steel in a black coating as well as aluminum handles which have a really cool design. I know, I know, Benchmade is a little controversial nowadays mostly because of their pricing and I honestly wouldn't uh, recommend most bug outs nowadays just due to the price. They're still excellent knives but they are just really overpriced and that especially goes for this premium version. That being said, I got this bug out back when Benchmade uh, in my opinion had premium prices rather than being overpriced, you know, a lot of people would refer to it as the butterfly tax because of their logo and how they're a bit more expensive than the rest of the competition, but some, including myself, would say it's worth it. However, I got this at a very special price from Blade HQ. Uh, I believe it was one of their call for price uh, type of sales where they don't show you the price online, but you just need to add it to cart. And I got this premium version of the bug out, I think for only $160, which is an absolute steal for what you're getting. The bug out is really popular, but there are a lot of people who dislike it. I really like the weight of the bug out. It is really featherweight. You barely know it's there. When you clip it onto your pocket, it kind of disappears, but of course it's there when you need it. And I do like how the aluminum scales make it feel a bit more premium and stronger in hand. Of course, the grivery scales on the standard model do sometimes tend to flex, and some would say it feels a little cheap, but that is all fixed with the aluminum handles. And then the M390 blade, definitely a huge step up in edge retention and stainlessness. And overall, I just really love the color scheme of the bug out. I really love the aluminum and then the block, the contrast of the black hardware, the black blade, as well as the red thumb studs and backspacers, a nice little pop of color to an otherwise neutral blade. And of course, the blade is in a versatile drop point shape. Pretty much all of the knives in this video has a drop point blade, except for the Malibu, but then again, it also has a relatively versatile blade shape. Of course, uh, you need a versatile blade shape for an everyday carry knife. That's why all of these knives are on the list. I got this knife years ago. It has been a mainstay in my e EDC rotation for a while. Uh, I love how it's lightweight. It's nice and premium. You got a really cool color scheme. And of course, I was able to get it at a steel price. Unfortunately, it's probably never going to be that low again. But uh, this has definitely been a mainstay in my everyday carry rotation for casual use and at work. And next up is the Chris Reeve Large Sebenza 31. This particular model is the plain Jane version with S35 VN steel. This knife means a lot to me because it celebrates a big milestone in my life. I bought this knife as a reward for myself once I started my career as a first responder. Once I got my state EMT license, I bought this knife at a great price and uh, it celebrates a great moment in my life. And of course, the knife itself, uh, really, it needs no introduction. It's the large Sebenza 31. You got the Reeve Integral Lock. Chris Reeve, of course, uh, pioneered the modern frame lock. Got that bank vault lock up. It's so satisfying hearing that lock bar lock up well, when you slow roll open the blade. For those of you who don't know, uh, you're not supposed to flick open your Sebenzas like a traditional thumb stud. You slow roll it open, and boom, it has that solid lock up. I love how the knife was made to be used. It's definitely a great workhorse knife. It's also very tough. A lot of people have said in the past, you can do fixed blade things with your Sebenzas, and it's definitely true. This knife is an absolute tank. But also with its design, I say, I personally think it's a little classy. It's also relatively unintimidating, so you can also carry it in more formal events. I think really the only thing against that would be its size. Again, it is the large Sebenzas, and it definitely is on the larger side of things. 
uh, in terms of EDC knife size. Of course, the blade is very versatile. It's, uh, in my opinion, a modified drop point. I feel like if the tip was a bit more upswept, it could be a clip point. But regardless, uh, it's a great, nice, versatile blade shape in a solid steel. S35VN is a great, versatile steel. It's uh, one of the original uh, super steels before Magna Cut. Nowadays, you can get your Sabenzas in Magna Cut. And I also really love the blue accents and the thumb studs and uh, some of the backspacers. Got a pretty solid titanium clip too. And its reputation precedes it. It has that bank vault lockup, uh, the premium feel, the awesome warranty, and it's definitely a mainstay of my everyday carry rotation. And next up, in my opinion, is one of the coolest and most unique knife designs out there, and that is the 8015 from Andrew Demko and Cold Steel. Both of these are Cold Steel 8015s. This one in particular is a customized version of the Cold Steel 8015. It's not a machine ground or full custom from Demko, even though that's definitely a big grail knife of mine. But for now, I have these two awesome Cold Steel 8015s. I was first introduced to the model with this uh, OD green version. Then, of course, I eventually bought this customized version off of someone from Knife Swap. Uh, in terms of the knife, I mean, it's just such a cool design. It's definitely a bigger knife and is definitely a bit more on the tactical side. But what I really love about the knife is the scorpion lock. Uh, once you open up the blade, this bar opens up and then it locks in. The lock alone is very strong. Per Andrew Demko, apparently it's not as strong as the triad lock, but it's still very, very strong in contrast to standard locks. But what I really like about the design is the fact that it gets stronger when you actually hold and grip the knife. Now that the bar can't move, you holding it makes the lock even stronger and safer. I just really love the fact about that design. It's really cool. And accessing the lock is also finger safe. You simply pull up the bar and then you can swing the knife closed. Really cool and finger safe, of course. Uh, it's just a really cool and unique design. I wish they made more variants of the 8015. I know recently they added some more colorways, I think like last year, but I just want more variants. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like uh, Demko is making more machine ground or in-house versions of the 8015. I really love the full custom and machine ground variants of the 8015 just because of their colorways and different materials. But for now, I'm satisfied with my pickup of a customized version of a Cold Steel 8015. This one in particular uh, has a full flat grind. They got rid of the branding and they swapped the black G10 scales for some red micarta scales and it contrasts real nicely. Of course, the blade is razor sharp. Uh, again, another versatile blade shape. It's a drop point. Got some really aggressive jimping on the spine too, which I like. And uh, the knife is just so tough. It the design is so cool and unique. Got a finger safe lock that unfortunately isn't really used anywhere else. The knife is just so cool in my opinion and despite its size I never get sick of carrying it. It's a nice EDC and uh, I just really love the design. And next up is the Protec Malibu. This is probably one of the most popular knives over the past few years. This knife absolutely exploded when it first came out. It was one of Protec's few manual knives. Of course, they're mostly known for automatic knives. It's also one of the very first production button lock knives out there. Button locks nowadays are probably one of the most popular uh, locking mechanisms for folding knives nowadays. The knife itself is very premium. Uh, this one in particular has textured purple aluminum handles. The aluminum is robust, which is what you'd expect from a Protec. Deep carry pocket clip is also really solid. What I really like about it is that Protec is one of the few companies that actually has not only recessed screws, but the actual pocket clip is recessed and is nice and flush with the scales. I think the only other companies that do it are like Civivi Wii and uh, some of the other uh, Chinese powerhouses out there. Surprisingly, not too many American companies do that, and Protec is one of the few that actually do it, which is nice. Got, of course, that satisfying flipper tab. It's a nice, fun, and fidgety knife. This model in particular has the reverse Tonto shape, another very versatile blade shape, has a slight curve and a nice tip. And I personally feel like the reverse Tonto blade shape is very fitting uh, with the overall shape of the knife. Just a nice little design detail to, that I like. The action is buttery smooth. The button lock mechanism is one of the best on the market. I personally think that in terms of production, 
knives, uh, Protex button lock is the one to beat. There are plenty of great button locks out there, but Protex just feels the most robust and satisfying. I really like how the knife is in what I like to call a standard shape. I like how the knife is kind of in a standard EDC knife shape. It's not too big, not too small, just right for EDC. The grip is great. There's this nice little curve for your index finger, and the knife is very comfortable to use. If, I, if I'm ever carrying my Malibu, I'll always be fidgeting with it, whether I like it or not, and it's definitely a knife that is never going to leave my everyday carry rotation. And rounding off my five favorite everyday carry knives in my collection is my favorite everyday carry fixed blade, and that is the Ono Everyday Carry from Lucadia Blade Company. Lucadia Blade Co. is actually a local brand to me, and they make custom knives. They started off making custom kitchen knives as well as fishing knives like the fillet knives, and the Ono is their first ever everyday carry knife design, and I've been loving it ever since I got it. This is definitely the newest knife of the five, but uh, it's definitely a mainstay in my collection. I do have a, a few other everyday carry fixed blades. I think one of the reasons why it became my favorite is that it's not just made in the USA, it's custom made locally to me, and it utilizes premium materials. It also has a great sheath, which I'll get into later. In terms of the blade itself, it's Magna Cut, and then this model in particular utilizes aqua carbon fiber scales. The scales just look really cool. It definitely adds a bit of pop to the knife. Got a lanyard hole in the back, got some nice jimping on the top, which is a favorite feature of mine when it comes to everyday carry knives. The blade, of course, I'm going to sound like a broken record. Versatile blade shape, It this is definitely a modified drop point. I feel like the tip is a bit lower than a standard drop point, but regardless, the knife is razor sharp. Magnet cut, of course, is the super steel to beat nowadays. It excels in all three pillars of a knife steel. The grip I get is excellent. You do get a nice big area for your index finger for forward grip. Of course, I rest my thumb always on the chimping, and then I get a nice solid forefinger grip. It's definitely a bit bigger than some of the other uh, everyday carry knives, but I feel like the uh, comfort of the grip definitely makes up for it, and it fits nicely in the pocket with the included Kydex sheath. It's custom fit for the Ano. It snaps nicely in, and of course, it did include the hardware. This clip in the back is excellent. You can, of course, put throw this on your belt. Uh, of course, for everyday carry, I like throwing this in my pocket. I like having this uh, clip onto the side of my pocket and then having the sheath inside my pocket with the handle still sticking out. So it's technically open carry per California knife laws and it carries nicely for an everyday carry fixed blade. It's not obtrusive or annoying in my pockets and it's nice and easy to access. You, as you can see, it's nice and easy to pull out and put back in safely. It's definitely not a cheap knife, but uh, the fact that it's a custom-made knife that's locally to me and utilizes top-of-the-line materials means that it is one of my favorite knives in my collection and is a mainstay in my EDC rotation. And that's going to do it for my favorite knives in my everyday carry rotation. These are the five that I just never get sick of when it comes to everyday carry. I have way too many knives. If I can't make a decision, I almost always default to one of these five knives. Let me know what you guys think of my five favorite everyday carry knives and let me know what your favorite everyday carry knives are in your collection. I'd definitely like to know down in the comments.